In our last video, uh, we finished creating our project template. And in this video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to focus on loading in the assets that we'll be using throughout our game. Uh, we will also start setting up the rest of the scenes that we'll be using. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. In the project files, you'll see there's a new assets zip folder. Inside that zip folder, you'll see all the assets we'll be using. Uh, you can also get the assets from the code start uh, zipped folder. Uh, so go ahead and copy those files into your uh, current project. Uh, so before we start loading in all of our assets, um, we're going to go ahead and create a few scenes. Uh, the first two scenes we're going to create is a boot scene and a preloader scene. And so the reason we want to do a preloader scene is it allows us to display a loading bar uh, because when we're loading in a lot of assets, it can take a while for Phaser to bring in all of those assets if you have a large amount. Um, and there's also other factors like uh, can your player's internet connection and other things like that. Um, so we want to go ahead and display a loading bar to let the player know that something is happening while all these assets are being loaded. Um, so just for example, uh, we're going to go ahead and switch back to our game scene real quick. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and create a simple for loop. Uh, so we're just going to do variable i equals 0. And then i is less than 500. We'll do i++. Plus plus. And what we're going to do is we're just going to reload that same logo image we're already using. Um, and so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to change the name. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change the key of this asset to include I. And we'll go ahead and we'll save our game. Uh, so you'll see what happens is as Phaser's loading in all these assets, um, it doesn't look like actually anything's happening in our game. Um, so you see it takes a few seconds for our logo to actually appear. And so if you're using large assets um, like audio files or you're loading in a large number of uh, images, um, it would leave the players in the dark of what's actually happening. Uh, so that's why we wanted to uh, create a progress bar um, so they know something is actually happening. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to remove that code and we're going to go ahead and come back uh, to our index.js file. Uh, so next we're going to go ahead and come to our scenes folder and we're going to go ahead and create two files. Uh, the first will be bootscene.js and the second uh, will be preloader scene.js. And in these files, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the code from our game scene into each one. Um, and we'll go ahead and we're going to change uh, inside boot scene, we'll change game scene to boot scene. And our key will be boot. And We'll come to preloader scene and we'll do preloader scene and we'll do preloader as our key. So we'll save both of those. And so in our preloader scene, we don't need our logo image and we don't need to create anything at this time. Um, and then same thing in the boot scene, we don't actually need to uh, create our logo. Uh, so we'll go ahead and come back to our game scene. And because we're loading our logo and the boot scene, we won't need it here. And then so what we need to do is actually import our new scenes into our index file. Uh, so we're just going to do boot scene from scenes boot scene. We'll import preloader scene from scenes preloader scene. And then we just need to add these to our config. And preloader. And instead of starting the gate room scene, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start our boot scene. So, 
so what's happening now is our game's starting and it's loading our boot scene, uh, but we didn't actually tell it to do anything besides load our image. Uh, so we need to go ahead and come back into our boot scene and in the create method, uh, we're just going to tell it to start the next scene in our game, which will be our preloader scene. And then same thing inside preloader scene, we're going to tell it to start our game scene. Uh, so you see that our, our logo is displayed again. Um, so we can see that everything's actually working. Um, so just as a recap, you'll see that we don't actually load our image anymore inside our game scene. We're actually doing that in our boot scene. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and load in the rest of the assets we're going to be using in our game. Uh, so most of the assets that we're using in our game uh, were actually provided uh, from Kenny's assets. Uh, so if you're not familiar, uh, Kinney provides a lot of uh, 2D and 3D game assets uh, for free. Uh, he also does have some bundles you can purchase, um, but his assets are free to use, um, and they are uh, really nice. Uh, so we'll go ahead and come back to our game. And we're just going to go ahead and copy this load image line from boot scene, and we're going to go ahead and put it in our preloader scene. And we're just going to do load assets needed in our game. And so you'll see in the assets folder, uh, we do have quite a few different things we need to load in. Um, inside the level folder um, contains all of the assets that we'll actually be using in the main part of our game. Uh, the logo, uh, we'll be using the Zenvo logo uh, for our preloader scene. And then the UI contains um, a few buttons that we'll be using in our title scene, along with a cursor um, that'll be useful for um, our game since it's a grid-based game. Um, so we'll go ahead and we're just going to copy this line a few, a few times. And the first thing we'll load is we'll load in our bullet, which is the bullet dark 2 outline here. So let's go ahead and copy that. And that's under assets level bullet. We'll just do level and do UI and then UI. Uh, so the next is this uh, tank uh, big red. Um, so we're going to go ahead and copy that as well. And this uh, is going to be our our towers that we're using in our game. And then the take sand. Uh, these are going to be the enemies that are used in our game. And then we have the tank body, large. And we're going to use this as the base um, that we don't want the enemies uh, getting to and destroying in our game. And then our next two will be our title and our cursor. Uh, so we have uh, title.png and then cursor. PNG, and then we also need two more uh, for our buttons. Uh, so we're just going to have blue button one and blue button two. Uh, so then we're just going to go ahead and load in our tile map and the sprite sheet that's tied to that tile map. Uh, so we're just going to do this dot load dot tile map tiled json. Uh, so our key, we'll just go ahead and call it level one. And that's assets level level one dot json. And then we need to load the sprite sheet um, that is associated with that tile map. So this dot load sprite sheet and we're going to go ahead and do terrain tiles underscore default 
Uh, so this key here needs to actually match um, what was used in tiled. Um, and then we're just going to go ahead and load in that file. So assets, level, and then terrain default.png. And then this one needs one more argument. Because it's a sprite sheet, we need to tell it the frame width and height of the sprites contained inside. So we're just going to do frame width, it'll be 64, and then frame height, and that's 64 as well. Um, so next, we're going to go back to our boot scene, and we're just going to go ahead and copy our logo image line one more time. And we're just do placeholder. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and change this to uh, logo 2. So we're going to use the phaser logo in our game scene um, while we finish building out the rest of our scenes. And then once um, we have everything done, we'll come back and remove this. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll come back to our boot scene. And we're going to change our logo to be logo slash Zen logo. And we'll go ahead and come to our game scene. We're going to do logo 2. So now that all of our assets are loaded, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to build out our progress bar. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the width and the height um, from our camera and our preloader scene. And the reason we're doing this is when we go to position the elements in our game, uh, we don't want to use a fixed position because if we're going to have our game scale to multiple screen sizes, uh, we would have to constantly update that uh, position. Um, so we're going to use that width and height from the camera so it's a little bit more dynamic and then that way we can have our assets positioned in the same place no matter what screen size we're using. So to do that, we're just going to do uh, var two variables, width and height. And what we can do is we're going to set it equal to this.cameras dot main dot width and then same thing for height uh, so in phaser 3 um, as you know you can have multiple cameras um, inside your scene uh, so we're just going to go ahead and detect whatever the main camera is and we'll be using that width and height so there's going to be a few different elements um, that will make up our progress bar. Uh, the first will be our logo um, that we want tied to our game. And the next one will be the actual progress bar itself. Uh, but then we're also going to add some text to it. Uh, we're going to display the percentage, of, so how much has actually been loaded of our game. And we're also going to display some loading text. Uh, so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're just going to go ahead and add our logo image. And we're going to do this add image. Uh, so for our arguments, I'm going to go ahead and use our width variable and divide it by two. And I'm going to use the height variable. I'm going to divide that by two and just subtract 100. And then the key of the asset we would like to load. Um, so while we're testing changes, I'm just going to go ahead and comment out our start game scene line. Um, so that way we can see what's actually happening in our uh, preloader scene. Um, so you'll see here that our logo does display. Um, and the reason I took 100 off is so that way it's not centered exactly on our screen. Uh, because since we only have multiple elements, I kind of want all of the elements to be centered as a group instead of um, just the logo itself. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back. And with that, that brings this video to an end. In our next video, we're going to go ahead and pick right back up where we left off. Uh, we'll finish setting up our preloader scene and our boot scene.